Hey ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, this is Looms and Eternal Envy and we're back doing it again. Team Dignus Haas versus No Tie Hunter. This is for defense number three. And this is the best of three series, obviously, but we are just casting this particular game because there were some very, very awesome heroes. None of which well actually Spectre has been picked, so that is one of the awesome hero that we're gonna see, and that is Team Dignitas piloting that, but uh, Envy, since normally we go through the entire picking band and we're not doing that today, just give us a quick download of what's going to be happening in terms of the draft. Uh, they're going to run Bat Rider off lane. Okay. Rubik, Spectre, Bane, Safe Lane, and Warlock mid. The okay. very moment we saw the Spectre, we are like, okay, we're we going to Undying, Aggressive Trial Lane, Wolf Crystal mid, and you know, with the Clockwork. Ten like hook remaining. with the disruption from the Crystal Man Nova and the Undying NA, we fought Five like we needed like really strong team fight and this like Crystal Man was uh, probably the best support for it. And also it was really good for the aggressive trailer. Now I guess that's the whole idea of Spectre not being exactly the most dominant early game carry, especially in this metagame today, right? Generally when you see a laning carry is something like Life Sealer, something like Sven, something like PL who has a very very decent and potent sized nuke that could combat against the trial lane, or at least not be food to it. Uh, Spectre doesn't really have that. He, I mean, she has Spectral Dagger, which is a nuke, it does slow, but Ten not exactly the, the most powerful trial lane. Envy, if you could, I'm not sure if it's possible, Five maybe you could turn up your remaining. mic a bit. You might be soft, I'm not sure. Turn it up? Yeah, if you can. I went out. Okay, sounds good, Die. even though I didn't hear any difference, but yeah. Okay, and Warlock's the last hero. So, Warlock's a hero that I personally love quite a bit, and I feel like he's completely... I don't want to, I don't want to say he's completely viable, but he's definitely viable in certain situations. And Team New Taken Toss is running it, and hopefully we're going to see the power of Warlock in this particular game. But the last and final pick is going to be Crystal Maiden, one of my favorite heroes. And uh, can you tell us why Crystal Maiden is not really picked Ten no more in Pro uh, the, the only reason is because she's slow, and that's... That's it. Five if they give her time movement speed, she'll be like one of the most picked supports. Yeah, I mean, just ju it. judging from the from her on paper, right? She has two nukes, right? Level two. That's pretty insane. So, I guess uh, you know, gotta gotta lose some weight at the gym. I see him. So, uh, you talked about the lanes. Can you say it one more time? Uh, Warlock mid, Bat Rider off lane, Rubik, Bane, Spectre, Safe lane. Warlock mid is probably the best way to play him, I think. I think support Warlock is silly, because he doesn't have a stun. He's not really too good at keeping someone off the lane. And I think and more importantly, he's, he's way too uh, EXP dependent. Yeah, he's EXP dependent and he doesn't... Um, like he, he, If you see a Warlock in the trial lane, he's like, you're like, okay, we're gonna try a trial lane for trial lane, because he's just useless. So. Yeah, I don't want to say he's useless, useless, but he's pretty useless. Like, Fatal Bond and, uh, to a certain extent, like, uh, Upheaval is not exactly the most impressive trialing spells. I, I remember, like, if, if you, let's say, jump back in a time machine about six, to t six months to eight months, and you saw, like, Bane Elemental, everybody, before Bane really dominated trialing, everybody was like, really, is that a trialing hero? Because he really is EXP dependent, he needs a, a big monopole, and you need gold to get that monopole. But unlike a Warlock, Bane Elemental, if he's low level, that Nightmare is still very, very decent. And Warlock isn't a hero like that. You really need very good level to get up, you know, a decent size Fatal Bond, uh, a decent size Upheaval, and of course that Rock. But You need 6. Yeah, you need 6 as soon as possible. That thing has a long cooldown as well, so... Um, yeah, being able to cast it many, many times is going to be good. It looks like both teams are going to be running on the bot here, and looking to play some wards. Very, very interesting to see that Clockwork has not actually skilled Rocket yet. Generally, you see them spamming it, but that's going to be very important in this engagement because Rocket is probably not his best level 1 engagement spell. It does have a very, very long cooldown. Battery Assault is what you want to get if the two teams actually do clash. Seems like Dignitas is going to back off uh, for now. Yeah, and right now, like, I'm trying to play sports, but I also don't want to show them. That you're playing sports? Play so yeah. I'm like, okay, Loda, go, 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 Aki, go. I'm going to go word. You guys drive them away. Yeah, they're there right now. Yeah, they're they are doing a fairly decent job driving away. Way too sexy. He's gonna be playing on the Rubik. Ties of time on that support bane. And on the bot here we do see uh AUI two thousand uh, on the Spectre. On the top lane it's gonna be Universe on the Bat Rider and Fog on World. So I wanna talk about their synergy first. Like the, sure. I talked about my team, but I didn't ever talk about the team. So Spectre Warlock, 
it's really good because the hunt with the potato bond is good. But the other reason is because potato bonds mixes so you want to spread out. But if you spread out, you get owned by desolate. So it was actually fairly annoying to play against. Okay, well, we're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, do you know what the exact proc range is for uh, uh, the uh, desolate? Um... I don't know. I think it's 325. 325. So actually, that that's, that's a very, very small radius uh, to actually have it proc. So that's a pretty big deal. So uh, we'll, we'll see that more of it in, in, in later episodes uh, as uh, these two supports are kind of jockeying okay. for position. Way Too Sexy is looking for a sentry ward right now. Is that actually in sight? No. This observer ward is not in sight. I believe that sentry is, and it's going to get immediately dewarded. So good job on doing so. And uh, we, we've seen... I, I guess there's less pressure on the offensive trialing to not able to get kills if the defensive trialing is not pulling. Act gonna run in there and take a lot of CS. That Nova as well as a couple more right clicks actually costs a lot of uh, Aki's HP. And looks like he's gonna get Nightmare and that could be really, really bad. You're gonna take the Nightmare immediately. Very good job in doing so. Because you're a lot tankier than uh, CMS. Yeah. But uh, more about the their lineup is that they, they ran Batrider offlane or maybe like something like a Batrider or Scylla offlane. It's trying to... It, they try to force you to safe lane because Batrider can usually beat almost every any hero one on one. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make you not try lane against the Spectre, but we're like, nah, screw it. Clockwork, you can lose the lane. We're going aggressive. Actually, about the Clockwork versus Bat matchup, Boba thinks actually Clock beats Bat one versus one. Uh, he is one of the best Bat players in the world. I just want to uh, hear your thoughts on on that matchup. Um, I feel like before today, I thought Clockwork gets owned. Uh -huh. But now, I don't really think so. I think if you mana burn the Batrider, he doesn't really have enough mana to his mate plus spam plus uh, Firefly. Denied. But uh, if you watch Amor Bodoff play right now, he's missing all his power dogs. I see. So it's and actually very important for him to get, get kind of in melee range, push him around with the with the bit, yeah. with the cog. Okay. Because yeah, the right. cog is pretty short cooldown, so you can spam it with the magic stick, and the bat's not going to be able to do anything. I mean, I imagine it's actually a little bit dangerous to kind of spam it relentlessly because that is actually your get out of jail free card as well if he's going on you. So, you gotta does, be, no, I think he just flies over it. Does it? No, I think you get pushed back. I'm pretty I sure it does. I'm almost 100% sure he just flies over it. Okay, well, like we'll, we'll test it out later on. Uh, but for now, Dignitas as well as Notai is just going to be jockeying for position on the bot lane. If you pull up the uh, CS menu here, you can see that Luna is comfortably out CSing AUI at this point, which you expect her to do so considering that. Uh, Lunar Blessing is absolutely no joke. And at this point, uh, the Diary lineup is a lot stronger if the engagement actually happens as well. So, all go going according to plan, I imagine. Yeah, right now, um, we we're playing pretty good in the tri lane because what we're trying to do is get the Undying and CM to drive the other two supports away so that it becomes a one first one between Loda and, and AUI. And like, AUI is going to lose that because he's Spectre against the Luna. Sure, so yeah. That's that's what we're trying to do. But Aki just went to the lane to reach level 2. Now he's got level 2 again, and so once again he's going to stay with me, and we're just going to drive him away. Yeah, and Are actually you... that level 2 is very, very important, because if you guys find a isolate support right now, that support is dead. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Crystal Maiden being one of the few supports that has dual nukes early on, and dual disabled nukes early on, which is very, very impressive. And uh, Tides of Time, got to be somewhat careful where he's trading. Yeah. Right, if you look at the rubric, he's doing the... Ooh, this is some uh, next level, level jungling. Let's see if... Yeah, he's going to actually get yeah. the time as well. So, this is a, this is a trick that you see... Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got the end of it, but I imagine you yeah. guys know what happened. Nova into Bite, into Decay, into Beams, yeah. and all that stuff. Yep. But uh, I... What actually happened was, uh, we're like, okay, Rubik's pulling, guys. Go on, Spectre. <laughs> how, how did you guys know Rubik was pulling? Uh, we had a word. We have two words. I can see pretty much every location that he needs to run to, to get to that camp. Oh, so you don't, ah, uh, you saw him going to that direction. You don't see him actually physically pulling, but you know that he's physically pulling. Yeah. Okay, so. Well, that... I mean, either he was getting mid or um, he was pulling, but we have another word and we didn't see any smokes on our heroes, so we're like, okay. Okay, that... so you know, you more importantly, you know he's not there. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's actually a very important point to point out to, I guess, the pub players, is that oh. if people always want, do you want to do tri lanes as Amor Bulldog? God damn, why am I missing kills? <laughs> Back to my point, is that uh, people always do tri lanes in pub, but they never actually run it properly. And one of the more important signals you actually get is that if you see enemy heroes missing whether they're pulling or ganking, that's the time that you go on that lane if you have a tri lane yourself. So it's very, very important to recognize these signals. And you do catch, you, you are supposed to get first blood when that happens. Well, or are you supposed to stay really, really bad? Also, sure. one more point before anything interesting happens. Um, so people have been like flaming us for calling him AUI instead of Ali. 
He's actually AUI. Uh, yeah, that's how he actually has addressed his name. He calls himself AUI. Yeah. But he really doesn't care. So, I mean, he hasn't made a big deal of it. So if you call him out, he doesn't really care. But yeah. So, all you so, fuckers so out there. Say, yeah, exactly. What the hell? All you fuckers out there. And yes, I just two, spoke two French words in the same, like, 30 second span. Fuck you guys. All right. All right, back to this cast. No more, no more F words. So actually getting a solo kill on the top lane here means that Universe is going to be dominating that lane. I, I think Emerald should be able to actually 1v1, but not after that one death. He's going to try to force... Ooh, he actually forced back the TP back. Um, yeah, he still has, like, he has less than half Universe CS, and there's a huge creep wave pushing against him, so he's way behind. He's like one dirt to CS in Universe right now. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's not too good, uh, even with a TP back. And... Uh, Bat is actually going to get checked here. I actually like that move right there. Sending the rocket into the base so you actually know the Bat's coming back to the lane because Bat is one of those heroes that you don't want to be uh, unchecked for this early in the game, especially nighttime. So that rocket, even though it didn't seem like it did much, it was very, very important information for uh, no time. Back in the mid lane, how's mid actually doing here? As I uh, haven't really talked about the skill build, but it seems like he actually has a two point into Shadow War, one point of Fatal Bond, and stats, stats, stats. This is not exactly how I would have built it, but uh, very, very interesting walk build. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that he's going for his build. I think he's going to skip up here. Well, I remember playing him with Fog a lot, and he used to play Warlock a lot. So when he picked this hero, we weren't really that surprised. But um, he usually went up here with Fatal Bond, Stats, and skipped Shadow Bird completely. Yeah, I'm not exactly too sure what this... I mean, obviously Stats is always good on any hero. Don't get me wrong. I think that. he just wants to be extremely, extremely tanky. Okay, but you always want to have a Fatal Bond max, and it's very surprising to see not, him not putting any points. But back in the bottom here, uh, Sentry Wars gonna be dropped, and looks like way too sexy, and a little bit of trouble, but looks like there's gonna be. Ooh, Crystal Mini gonna get in position for a Nova. Can she get in position for a bite? That's gonna be Queen Kush, and a second Nova is gonna get. Or second bite is gonna get the kill, but Batrider has already teleported, and Loda in big trouble at this point, but not before they get an extra kill. Crystal Maiden and Loda should be dead. Eternal Envy drops a tombstone. But that's just a level 1 tomb, and you're getting chased all the way, but, but S4 is going to come right in with a huge nuke right in the face. And overall, I think that's a fairly successful trade. Yeah, Batrider got a couple kills, and that's going to put him very, very close to Blink. As I say that, though, the fight's not over. Rockets drop, Envy dies, and I think that's a lot more even. Um, even though, uh, yeah, both teams traded carries, both mid solo got a kill, but more importantly, I think Universe getting close to that Blink is so, so important for Dignitas. Yeah, we, we, we thought it was an even trade because they used Warlock ult and they only got one extra kill while our clockwork was free farming. Mm -hmm. They committed five heroes and we only had used four. Also, Luna's got hit level six and so we're going to have a momentarily um, like stronger team fight. Yep. So we can we can start being aggressive for the next like two minutes. Yeah, it's very, very important to actually take advantage of that long, long cooldown of that Warlock ult. And yeah, like you said, once Luna hits six, you guys could actually maybe make a little bit of more aggression. And uh, maybe look for a tower, maybe even an early engagement on the Roshan pit, whatever that might be. Uh, no tie will have the advantage. Or Kingbu gets picked up here by S4. And that's can you can you give me your timer before we continue? Like, yeah, what, sure. What I'm at 8:30 replay time. 8:31. Okay, 832. we're okay. Same. All right. Okay, look at mid now. Mid lane here. It looks like we're gonna have a nightmare initiation. Immediate teleport in from the clockwork here. And let's see if a tide's gonna get here picked off. If the rocket's gonna give sight. Where's the hook? The hook's gonna hit right on target. The cogs on top. And Bane Elemental is gonna have a very very tough time under that pit. Yeah, a couple more right clicks. Good TP here from Admiral. It's pretty, it was good TP from Admiral, but it's like obvious that he would TP there. I think it was a really big misplay. It's not really big because his death doesn't mean too much. But, I mean, right now he's only level 2 and he really shouldn't have done that. You know the enemy has a clock and I mean, he's, he's going to TP in. I think that would have been a more acceptable play if Warlock had that ultimate. But like we pointed out earlier, uh, no tide's going to have that advantage because uh, the Warlock ultimate is not up, and uh, that's why, you know, that kill was so easy for No Tide to pick up. And yeah, uh, slow to hits level 6, you guys see in, in, uh, No Tide's being extremely aggressive on the bot lane. AI basically can't do anything about it. She is level 6 as well, she being Spectre, but, I mean, what what's the level 6 Spectre going to do against the tri lane? And again, that Warlock ult is down. The Batrider blink is up, though, so that's something to be worried about, I imagine. Oh, there's a haunt to actually, what, scout? It's just to annoy us. Okay. I mean, oh no, he, he, no he, he's, this, it's to escape. To escape from the bot because he doesn't yeah, have so a teleport skill? Yeah. I guess so. It does It does cause quite a bit of mana. Now, actually going back to the uh, fog build on the Warlock as we see the tower being destroyed on the bot list. I mean, as much as stat is good for Warlock, 
really need to actually max Fade Obon, and I'm very, very surprised to see him max Shadow Ward. Shadow Ward's actually just not that good of a spell outside of laning stage. I guess well, it, it's a I, little I, I bit better in I this case. I don't think he he thinks he needs to use the Fatal Bonds unless it's a team fight, and he doesn't. He probably doesn't think he can get five heroes in in the team fight anyway. So why not just get a level one? Well, I guess that's that's one way to look at it, but I mean. And let me go back to my sh point. Shadow Ward's generally not that good of a spell. It's okay in this game, particularly because Spectre, you know, she could take a lot of punishment. Bat Rider could take a lot of punishment, and they're always in there. And, you know, that, that heal per second is actually pretty impressive. But I, I'm not sure whether I buy that reasoning of, oh, you know, you, uh, you're you going to spread out anyways. I was to point out right now that, um, well, I'll go back to that point later, but... That was, that was, there, there's a lot of good play right now. We TP top with two heroes, and instantly two heroes top from Radiant, they all left, and they went bottom to gank Luna, because they realized, oh yeah, they TP two top. So Luna's gonna be alone. So they tried ganking Luna, but Luna's like, oh, they're gonna try to gank me, so he TP's top too. So there's a lot of mind games going on. And there's no wards. Like, right, no so actually, that, that that's what I want to ask you about. There is no wards. What actually makes you guys think, or understand, or realize that teams are teleporting around? You just go like, what would, they, what would we do? If we were dumb. Okay. Then he, yeah. well, but right now he's getting lost on Amro. Yeah, Amro in a little bit of trouble here. Ooh, that cog did not actually push him on the high ground. I don't think, I don't think it actually would be able to push you that far up. And that's going to be a flaming lasso uh, wasted or used in that case. Warlock ult is back up and I'm sure you have you have marked down in time and realized that as well. But despite that, having 5 hero and the lack of flaming lasso means another tower going to no time. You guys feel very confident. Seems like you want to yeah. push for tier 2. The reason was because uh, we knew Bad Rider had 0 mana. Look at his mana. Ooh, okay. And we're like, okay, we can keep going. All right. And uh, flame break. Time, though, we're, we're, we need to conserve middle. We don't want AUI to get a free tower. And you don't want AI to pick up, you know, every single last hit. Well, he is gonna do that, unfortunately, for you guys. But right now, tower damage is gonna be, uh... Look how S4 is playing right now. He just runs right past tower that he realizes, but... No one can stop him. Actually, generally, that's a clockwork job. I'm very surprised to see S4, which is not exactly the tankiest up hero. This has Spike Carapace for a little bit of, quote-unquote, effective HP, but teleportation is gonna come in from bat. Now he's completely full mana, even drops a uh, flame break on top, even utilizing a little bit of fountain regen. Uh, he helps so and pops a clarity as well. That's pretty interesting. But that's gonna prompt a retreat for no tide. And again, AUI, I always see Dayton Toss does a very, very good job of this. Is that it seems like AUI has a very good understanding of when he needs to back and when he doesn't. He he is an expert when he's playing PL. Look at top first. Uh, there's a little bit of dive here against way too sexy. Way too sexy just melts. Yeah. Dayton Toss is I think their best strength is their ability to split push. And knowing like one of the things you need to be able to do when you split push is knowing how far exactly you can go mm -hmm. before you shoot back. Because if you like, if you can get one extra wave, that extra wave can win you the game. That That's extra crazy. wave is 200 gold. Could put you. Well, it's not about the 200 gold. It's about more like the pressure. Uh, yeah, the pressure. Okay, I mean, I mean, the 200 gold does matter, right? If you're especially yeah. if you're rushing for an item such as a uh, vid booster. Actually, very interesting. Just a very naked. I, I thought a relic would be coming in for AI because you know it's AI and he's farming cr crazily. I guess uh, another point that to, to say about AI is, you know, he's playing Spectre, right? He's one of those heroes that you can split push and just basically haunt into the fight. Uh, but I guess this is more of a, a tip for when you're not playing Spectre, when you're playing those heroes like Phantom Lancer or Sven or whatever, uh, that you, you recognize when you could push for an extra wave and when you cannot. Yeah. So right now we realize that we can't push against their lineup. Their lineup is really annoying to push against. They're just going to drag us behind their wave. And if we come in, they're gonna fade up with me. Oh, yeah, look at mid first. Mm, yep, S4 is gonna get lasso, immediate nukes into the face. Even a fiend script. No, that one's not a fiend script. That was a fiend script animation. Her haunt even gonna be used here to uh, chaos attempt, I guess? Why not for AI? I think it's for, I think it's for vision. For vision as well to see if the team is not uh, getting complete initiative on it, I guess. Well, I mean, if you use that and your, your clock was trying to hook in, he might just hit your illusion. Sure, fair enough. So. I think he's trying to get vision, and maybe if he's next level, he was thinking of that as well. So yeah, one thing I've noticed here about Dignitas' playing style is that the, the split push, the split farm, AEI is right now farming, and unfortunately Loda isn't, but he's going to be uh, joined with the team. I guess that's one thing to point out about the ways you guys play. Loda actually plays with the rest of the team a lot, which is not a lot of, not, not something a lot of carry players could say. No, I can play this game a lot. I think Loda likes to farm alone a lot, and I think if you're talking about a team that likes to stick together, I would think it's uh, Liquid. 
Well, yeah, Liquid always takes like five yeah, to get. That's right now, we decided to go Roshan because they no longer have Lasso and they don't have Hunt. But we're not too sure if it's a good idea. I mean, they do have one of the big... Yeah, there is a big rock on top. Fatal Bond does hit everybody in that Roshan pit. No, ooh, actually, the... the the Eclipse does do a very, very decent size amount of damage. Loda is very, very low, and he's actually gonna go down here to a couple more right clicks. He does, and looks like, ooh, S4 is gonna fight just about everybody at Tombstone. He's doing so much damage. Nice focus here by Fog using that Golem to focus on it. Way too sexy on the run. Oh no, stolen Impale from Way Too Sexy without any animation. Envy's gonna try to go for the kill. One more. Oh, decay, decay, decay. Decay not doing the right here. Nova and Bite here. Come One more right click. Loda bot back. Loda's gonna get a double kill here, and it's AUI special. Spectre with the golem trying to fight everybody away and uh, Aki's gonna have another bite another Nova but she's just way too quick and there's gonna be vision being granted one more beam oh beam gets fog one more beam one more beam there's the beam there's gonna be Nova even the neutral joining here and I do believe AI is gonna go down Admiral's gonna secure the kill for the team but flaming lasso comes in as well buyback Han everything comes in from team Dignitas and looks like a two-man cog against his own team oh no that was not the best cog and Batrider such a powerful here. Aki's gonna try to man fight his way out of here. Neutrals again helping out the no time on their team trying to bottle his way up. It's a bat rider. Rocket's gonna secure the kill. AEI by the way has chased all the way to the other side and I do be believe kill Loda. So Loda bot back died again. Meanwhile AEI bot back didn't get a kill and it looks like Tides of Time hit six and seven in the midst of confusion was able to use Finn's grip on top of that. And I do believe all these series of exchanges is not favoring no tie, but is it ending right now? S4 is yeah, cloaked we lost up. Eight and they uh they lost seven and we used two buybacks, they used one buyback. Yeah, but more importantly it's the buyback that uh Loda and he died twice and obviously Spectre bought back and got a couple kills. So yeah, a very, very unfavorable exchange here from uh uh, no tide, and I think that's really gonna solidify the. I, I want to say advantage that Dignitas is slowly gonna get. Again, uh, Rock is down, so there is an opening here for for Dire, but Dire doesn't have Eclipse up for a bit, so it's gonna be a little bit awkward in, in the next couple of minutes before BKB is finished on Luna. Yeah, we didn't exactly feel like they had an advantage here. Though. We thought it was kind of even because we do have ancient stacks, and they are they are really unable to farm neutrals as well as we can. Mm -hmm. So. We thought it was like kind of even right now, but we feel like we had an advantage before and after that exchange, we no longer have it though. And I'm guessing even looking at the replay of full perspective, that uh, that opinion doesn't change, right? The fact yeah, that it's think. still fairly even. Yeah, I mean, Spectre is not exactly the best Ancient Clare, even at late game situation, whereas if you're Luna, if your Glaive is bouncing, if you have insane damage, those stats could be uh, actually brought up uh, or killed very, very quickly. So I, I actually am noticing the lack of pulling as we're rolling past 18 minute. Uh, I guess uh, you guys are just a little bit busy doing other stuff at this moment. I think S4 is looking for that level 11, which is actually pretty important in uh, kind of sustaining that longer invisibility. I think I'm just bad and I should have pulled. <laughs> okay, so you're just bad. <laughs> yeah. Good thing I pointed that out here. D-War comes out from Dick Team Dignitas. And I guess that's one thing they're a little bit concerned about is that, uh, you know, Notai does have the dire advantage for the Roshan. But for now, uh, I guess that's just a precursor of the these crazy, crazy team fights. And and uh, look at Tides of Time. He's just like no fear, running past how. Yeah, it's because they have up. a mech, and they know we don't have a mech. So. Yeah. Speaking of mech, quick item check here. Mech is up. Blink is up. Vit booster. I guess it's just gonna be the standard vit booster into diffusal blade on a U guy. No, he's gonna go tank. He does, he realizes he doesn't really need any damage. He just needs his whole team to be tanky, and they just gotta do damage of their new shit. Okay, I mean, I guess that, that fits with the rest of the lineup. Oh, uh, we'll talk about that here as the Batrider gonna get in gank in the jungle. And that gank's actually very important, especially with Haunt being used like this. Uses, uh, I guess, a bad word, being wasted like this. With two ultimates down, I, I think that mid tower could be attempted. At least for the next, like, 25 seconds. Or the Roche. Uh, I'm not sure what we do here, but... Um, uh, looking at it from, like... Like a caster perspective, mm -hmm. we really can't push this. Really? Like, we really, really can't push this. I mean, nice. they have rock, sure, but. That warlock. Look, if if you can't push against 4v5 with Han and Batrider dead, then. Look, look at this. I mean, you bait out Glyph, Batrider's back alive. I, I think that, yeah. You guys at least got the Glyph, and I'm sure you're yeah. typing Glyph timing down. Is this Swoshan timing now? I'm gonna uh... try. Why? Why did we do this? <laughs> what? They have okay. all their ultis up. 
Well, Spectre does not have her all up, but he does definitely have a teleport uh, for the mid tower. I guess Team Ancients is another thing, but oh, Flaming Lasso here against M uh, against Envy. Envy's gonna be trying to drop that Tombstone. Tombstone not dropped just yet. Gotta drop that Tomb. No Tomb here. Loda does drop his ultimate, doing a lot of damage, all sorts of damage being done, but seems like Team Fight's going in the favor of the die for now with 8 Rhea not joining a fight here. Loda in big trouble. Loda's very, very low. AS trying to chase for the kill, but not gonna charge in Tombstone for that. The Rock Golem is gonna clear up the Tombstone. Looks like with the Haste Rune here, you're gonna be going on AUI. AUI is gonna get impaled to the face. Worst impale. impale is cooldown, but made it, safety, uh, made it to the safety of the tower. So winning a team fight against a, a rock as well as a flaming lasso initiation, that was pretty good. It was a very, yeah, very hectic they, of a team fight. I'm not sure what happened exactly. The Bane ulti got instantly cancelled, uh -huh. and no one disrupted the Dundying got lucky, and he lived one like 100 free. So they wasted their lasso, they wasted their Fane's grip. And after that, they only have the Rubik left. They used the lift on Undying as well, so they pretty much use everything. Yeah, actually, and when... also the crystal made use the uh, his ulti, her ulti, and no one stopped her at all. So that <laughs> I did not catch that, which is a shame. Crystal made an ultimate, very, very. I don't want to say underrated because I don't think he's that good, but I feel like it should be gotten more often. But in this game, I don't think you have should have gotten the crystal made an ultimate. I mean, there is the warlock ult. Well, you generally drop the warlock ult fairly early. At the early. beginning, you cast it afterwards. I guess so. Yeah, you don't initiate with a CMO. I, I guess there's that too, but. Um, I, I just want to go back to when you got initiated. Um, a lot of Undying players, when they're getting jumped on and, and getting initiated on like this, they're like, Oh my god, Tombstone's my best spell. Let me spam and drop that. And I, I think most of the time, if you can only cast one spell, Tombstone is the spell to cast. But uh, if you saw what Envy did there, Decay on, I think, two or three people, that gave him a lot of extra HP. And suddenly, he got a lot tankier. The Tombstone got dropped afterwards, and every all the other spells followed up, and that Tombstone did a lot. So. I guess one thing to talk about with Undying is, you know, be aware of what you could get away with in terms of casting spell. Cookwork's gonna go in here against, uh, way too sexy, Haunt comes in, the grip uh, on Envy, Envy is gonna try to drop a couple of spells, Tombstone is already down, Flash Golem running away here, and they're gonna try to focus on Universe, but these team find not as much successful here, Aki's gonna go down, die to that Fatal Bond, and Firefly on top of everything. This team fight, I think a little bit more in favor of the Radiant, but this team fight's way too spread out here. Oh, S4 is gonna get a spell stolen. He is gonna get out of mana, but is gonna make it out alive. He does have five charge on the wand as well. Well, he's gonna use everything, and he doesn't have a TP out, but nobody's chasing him. Tombstone's gonna get cleared up once again, or trying to. And I guess, I guess judging by the scoreboard, uh, no tie lost that one. Uh, yeah, it was two for one. The reason why I lost that fight is because Lola didn't use the clips, or maybe he didn't have it up. But before we get too freaking deep, I, I, I forgot to, um, I talked about how, um, I'm not sure why we fought the previous fight, not this one. Mm -hmm. But, and the reason was because we got a mech. I was thinking, I was like, why, why we did we decide to do this when they have all their ultimates up? And it, yeah, it's cause clock got the Okay, mech. so the, the reason you fought this fight. This uh, fight was different though. I'm probably Because, because you guys had the mech. And how ironic no, no, I- No, that was, that was a previous fight. No, the previous fight. Okay. Remember, like, before the fight happened, I was like, why did we do this again? But, yeah, it yeah. Mech. I, I mean, I, I kind of just want to ask. Like, this game's kind of like odd in the sense that the the two fights ago, you guys took the fight. They had every single ultimate. You guys wanted this fight, a little it bit different. A, and I think that's more more because of their target of initiation, right? The no, the, I think it was just the eclipse. Because we almost won the previous. The, yeah, we almost won won the last fight. Well, I mean, the the first fight they blew everything on you, and they weren't able to kill the undying. But this fight, they, they, they focus fight. on... I think they did pretty much the same thing this fight, except they last sold the Well, the, the grip didn't get cancelled either here. S4 is going to use that fog here and try to walk in. They're a little bit afraid here. Sentry's going to get dropped. The hook shot's going to come in from out of nowhere, focusing on fog. Fog's going to drop before casting his ultimate. That's huge. But meanwhile, the Loda dropping his ultimate. But what did Rubik steal? Did Rubik steal Eclipse? He did, but he doesn't have mana to use it right now. And that's going to prompt a retreat here as Warlock buys back. Tombstone is down, but... Ooh, that next fight for you guys, it can't be good because not only do you have Rock, Lasso, and everything else, but they're gonna have Eclipse on top of that. Have you guys realized that they got Eclipse? I don't, think, I don't think we realize it. Oh my goodness. That's not good. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, Spell Seal does actually go through DKB. Uh, but, uh, uh, let's see how Team Dignitas is gonna play this uh, after having able to get Eclipse. Envy's gonna be, again, looking for that pull as we're rolling past 53. So S4 decided to go Dagon on Nyx Assassin. It's pretty much, I think it's his first time getting a Dagon on Nyx Assassin. The reason to why he got it was so we could burst Warlock? down the Warlock. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, well, actually, I, I'm not a big fan of Dagon on well, on Nyx, but in this particular case of needing to burst out a particular hero, such as important as Warlock. Not let's not forget the fact that if he drops Fatal Bond and Rock on top of you know everybody, it's not good. Also, he's got the mech, right? So if you get, get that type of initiation when you could uh, hook in, focus in with Vendetta, Dagon, you know, that's actually a big win for No Time if that happens. I have no idea what you just said because my parents just can't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> you're flying to your parents. No big deal. But I, I was justifying the the dragon build and explaining why that's good. Tower denied is gonna go in the middle. Here. Oh, fog! Trying to get the last hit. Crystal Maiden, getting the denied. We should have killed Universe there. It was uh, I think S4 the, was too shocked about what happened. Took you guys all by surprise. Didn't think he would do something like that. Yeah. Again, Spectre having the ability to haunt and because AI is uh, so proficient, kind of split farming, split pushing, just constantly haven't stopped farming at all and again we see AUI doing something uh, you know instead of getting a defusal blade on a defusal blade hero what you normally think as a defusal blade hero is just a good Oyasha and you last time said it's just because you could move camp move between camps faster is that the reason I don't know I don't, I don't know about Spectre on that one on yeah he doesn't go with defusal at all Inspector. I mean if you're not if you're not going radiance and if you're not going uh, you know Diffusal Blade, you imagine that something is totally very awkward, but AI is up with that, yeah. Uh, I think, um, like, no one really understands Spectre that well, so it's, I don't think you can really judge him for not getting Diffusal Blade. Is Diffusal sure. Blade that good on a Spectre? Well, I mean, Spectre's, Spectre's a hero that's been around for a long, long time, right? And I imagine throughout all these years, you know, the standard item build is quote unquote the most efficient one, but. Uh, should they get a couple of buffs? You know, the Han does last now, and maybe that uh, Yasha does help you do a little bit more damage as the team is running away from that Golem. And uh, if you're Crystal Maiden, that that's pretty sad. You're gonna eat I, some procs. The thing he cares about the most is the Manta Illusion giving you Desolate damage, and the other reason is because he wants to be tanky. That's the only thing he really cares about this game. Sure, but the extra benefit of let's say, your Manta Illusion doing more damage now, because uh, you know Agility does car carry through. Uh, Agility gain and does extra damage. S4 is going to lead the charge. The entire team is smoked up right now. And he's also vendetta up and tries to look for that kill, but going to transition into bot push. And let's see if this is going to be enough to catch Ting Toss out of position. It, it might very well be, right? With everybody out, the entire four guys going to charge all the way to the bottom. There's a fortify, and that's going to give the uh, Radiant team enough time to kind of reinforce this tower. And suddenly it's going to be a 5v5 under the enemy tower. And again, they have that eclipse. Oh. JK, they didn't even uh, have time to use that clip, so. And it's, uh, it ran out. Oh, Flaming Lasso initiate here against Universe. Haunt comes in right now. Hookshot, I think, guy actually got the Warlock, but the Rock has been dropped. Dagon was not able to help out here. BKB did pop, but look at that grip, just really making sure Loda isn't doing anything. Finally pops his ultimate. Is able to actually per, uh, per, uh, sound a couple guys. AU is gonna try to TP out. He's gonna actually make it out Fatal alive. Bond. Oh my god. But the Rocket, uh, the, the Golem. Wait, did the golem just splash? I think he just splashed and killed like eight zombies at once. What happened? What were we trying to point out? Fatal Bond's OP. Fatal Bond just kill everything. Did you see that? We just lost like five heroes to Fatal. Well, your like, HP was dropping very, very fast. I couldn't say that. The, the fight was like, we won the fight really easily in the beginning. We caught two and we were almost nearly all full HP. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden the golem hit us, hit us like five times and everyone died. I heard I heard recently the golem was like bugged in the sense that it was doing way more damage it was supposed to. Look, look at it go. He's he's like cleaving every single hit. I I'm not sure if that's the reason why uh, Dignitas might have picked it, but uh, everybody's te been telling me to play Warlock. I I need I need viewers to confirm on this one. Um, apparently the war the Warlock uh, ultimate is cleaving on every single hit. I don't know if that's true or not. That makes me sad. Well, I guess uh, you could you could uh, focus on the golem in the next, in this replay and let me know if that's actually happening. Yeah, because that would be pretty. I'll, wait, I'll be pretty depressed <laughs> if that's the reason to I lost. Well, wait. Oh, well. you guys lost. Don't spoil nothing, please. Well, we lost the best of three. Well, you're you're the worst caster ever. I'm going into hiding. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Any case here, uh, Fogged is uh, farming on the mid lane. Yeah, I actually want to point out about Fogged's build is that he, he maxed his heal and then just went back to Fatal Bond and then skip uh, upheaval. Which I, again, 
personally think that last two points of the Shadow War is a little bit, you know, unnecessary, but hey, you know, it's he's, he's playing well, his team is doing well, so, you know, what can I say about that? Well, Shadow War is good if you survive for a long time, you can actually take the full duration of the hill. Sure. And I think that's what he's aiming for right now. Ooh, fogged. Mm, in a little bit of position, Crystal Maiden's invisibility is running out right now. CM, CM, he's waiting for help. Teleport, it's gonna come in. It's gonna be a bite to initiate. And where's the Nova? Where's the Nova? Utilizing that chain stun perfectly. Don't want to overlap any kind of stun. The beam's gonna hit. But look at Fog. He's just so damn tanky with that cloak with the mech. He's actually tress swapping like crazy right now. Try to still initiate. Gotta focus him down before he rock. He mechs up. Where's the rock? Fatal Bond. No rock though. That's gonna be huge. But the Fatal Bond, it's just doing so much. Lola BKB is not no he popped the BKB but just dies in me you know, right after BKB runs out Envy gets caught and where's the grip was grip already used grip has already been used gonna be no brain sap to follow up either one for one trade but losing a warlock way way less important than losing a Luna yeah he actually couldn't use a rock because it was on Kuno oh I'm not exactly sure why that team fight went so bad for us the, I think Lola got um, lassoed into the tower and they died I, Lotus either getting lasso or getting grip, or in some cases both, um, as uh, S4 gets a solo kill. I guess one one weakness of this particular lineup is that, like, the stuns here is not that good, right? For our team? Yeah, there are stuns, but they're not exactly far-reaching stun. The free spy is very, very low. The impale is not exactly the highest range. The hook shot is going to be used on Warlock. The cogs, you know, universe is not, or not universe, ties of time, he's not going to walk near that cog and use his stuff, so... Like, you don't have a long range sound like Fissure or something like that, and it feels like he's getting these grips off more than he should. You mean the Bane? Um, yeah, the, I the, mean, the, the clock can just stay back. To well, initiate. no, the clock I, is initiating I, I think, on the Warlock. I'm not too sure. Like, you can't really ask for too much. Like, what other supports are there that do have these super long range stuff? Well, if I could name any support, right? Shaker is one of them, but... Obviously, I mean, that would have been a lot different in terms of laning and all the other. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that you know, uh, I'm saying Lotus having a very, very tough time because the grip and, and lasso is just, you know, zoning on him every single time, and it's tough for Luna despite having BP, BKB when you when you're using all that BKB just being stunned up. So yeah, the problem with the, um, what's happening right now is because they have a four step on the bat rider in the previous engagement at the bottom tower. We literally said, okay. Let him grip Lodo, and we're gonna instantly frostbite him. But this team fight, when he got gripped, I think he got, he got instantly forced that. Mm -hmm. So it was way too hard for Aki to frostbite him. And even if he does force frostbite him, he's still like he he really can still force staff, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's really Dyer's far away. Top yeah. Tower is under yeah. In any case, your quick Adam check here. You talked about the force out. Math out is finished. So AI just tanking up, and that's just good enough. And seems like actually we see a point booster. I could tell you that Acceptor on Warlocks. Probably the one of the worst ultimate or one of the worst act upgrade. Yeah, you get you know, you get double ultimates or double golems. That's cute and all, uh, but when you you're, when you're spending 4k in an item, you expect a little bit more. Unless your your a golems, golem hurts. unless your golems is cleaving on every hit, then I will fully advocate acts of your ultimate. Oh, hook shot initiate again here. Blink dagger up as well, and look at the initiation. The grip is going to be used against Admiral Bulldog, but can they? No, the rock golem is it's dropped, and is it cleaving? It's I don't know. Crystal made an ultimate, doing quite a bit of damage here. Loda drops his own ultimate. Three for a two right now. Buyback here from Clock. Immediate tile teleport comes in, and that rock is doing so much damage. Meanwhile, here the chase here against Universe the Zombies, slowly slinging him down. Anything else? Anybody's gonna follow? He's gonna get four staff out, and that should be it. Lotus on the chase, blink dagger out, and universe. Is there gonna be rocket? Rocket on cooldown, and that's gonna be it. And envy the verdict. Made? The verdict on that golem. Crystal. What? For, for, screw the verdict on the golem. Verdict on the on the crystal. Man. I didn't even watch that. I just watched the crystal in the LT. Did she channel full duration oh, ultimate? Shit! I think she did four thousand damage. She's not even fight. Well, it is random pulse. I mean. Did she, she really know. actually hit a lot? She got double kill and her ulti hit three to four heroes. My god, I can't be <laughs> believe I, I didn't point that out. That that would have made my day. We're watching it at the end. We're gonna rewatch it at the end? Yeah. Alright, 34, 30, 34 minutes, I'll remember that one. Crystal made an L double kill. Alright.
Man, these team fights, I, I feel like whenever I cast with you, these team fights are just like so damn crazy. It's just hard for me to catch. Universe finding ammo. Looks like those two is gonna fight it up. And Universe, uh oh, flame lasso, and it's gonna force half himself out. And Universe, excuse me, Admiral is fairly tanky. The hookshot is gonna miss. Team Zone's gonna drop, and you guys are really way out of position, in my opinion. Your teammates not behind. Admiral Bulldog's gonna get healed up a lot by Envy. Team Zone's gonna be dead, and suddenly this team fight's gonna be going the other direction. Loda pops his BKB, and he is gonna be fighting. Uh, no lasso fog. This seems like he's lagging or whatever. There is the uh, Enfeeble being dropped here on Loda, and that is such a powerful spell against a carrier. And looks like the grip against Envy, and that's gonna be. Another free kill. Emerald dies to the Fatal Bond. Emerald died to Fatal Bond? Well, that sucks for Emerald. Yeah, it really sucks. He Fate... died next to the base, too. Yeah, Fatal Bond is pretty OP. Ooh, Aki's gonna turn around and start trying to fight this, but here comes the uh, AUI. Haunt, it's gonna be used as well. What? I swear I got a backstab kill. Ah, uh, here. Haunt's gonna be used here to help out. And look look at look at these chunks of damage that he's doing right now. Yeah, there's gonna be Impaled being used, but that Yasha, you know? Okay, he's not gonna chase with that Yasha, but. Desolate, that shit hurts. Desolate is insane. 60 pure damage, is it? Yeah, it hurts too much. 65 pure damage. As you guys know, pure damage, not reduce my armor, not reduce my magic resistance. It, it just gets you. It doesn't work against BKB, right? It does not. It doesn't go through magic immunity. Uh, but, I mean, Crystal Maiden's gonna still take it up her, you know where, so. Any case, Crystal Maiden's working on that BKB. You know what that happens, or what that means when that happens. Gonna be some sick ults. He doesn't even need that BKB. He's getting full channel <laughs> without it. All the game. Maybe we should be acceptor. Way too sexy. Uh, it's gonna be under tower. Is he gonna go for this? I don't. I don't think so. No, when we rocket and we saw the bane, we're like, nope. <laughs> there goes that. Idea. Yeah, one one thing I've noticed that Dignitas Toss is actually very very good, especially keeping up that mid tower alive. I think this is like the third game I casted of them. That they always keep their mid tower alive, like they just dedicate, make sure that thing never falls, and uh, you know, it's actually very hard for a hero like uh, Nyx Assassin to get those ganks off. Yeah, that that's a really important tower. Yeah, like when you're against Nyx Assassin, and against the clock as well. Sure, yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt for the Broshan engage engagement here as well. Now, AI is one of those here uh, players. I, I guess he's gonna go for Radiance at this point, or is he going for a straight heart? Well, he he needs he doesn't need damage. He has enough damage as it stands. Because, like, all he needs to do is to get the heroes to spread out and own them with his desolate, with his uh, mental illusions. And we pretty much have to spread out to some extent because we're too scared of the fatal ones. Firefly, don't you yeah. don't want to be traveling in the pack? I, I guess so. It's just and so odd, really, you know. Like, if you get chased by a Radiance Spectre, what do you do? Do you run away? No, you just kill him. But if you're getting chased by a heart, you run away. Well, Universe jumps in and immediately eats it to the face. I guess it's Roshan time? But again, there's still the rock, but Loda is going to be sitting in that pit and start hitting away here against the Roche. Let's see what the response here from Team Dignitas here is not a buyback on Batrider. And that's Look how we're playing right now. We're like, okay, guys, spread out, he'll sell a Roshan because that fatal bond to Ulfi. So uh, about that uh, fatal bond, not, not really good to level up because we're we're spread out. Then you gotta retract that statement or rethink that statement because uh, that that thing has a huge AOE apparently. Really? How huge? I don't know. It's big enough to. Let me see. Does, does the two-tip say? Can I make a complaint to Valve? The two-tip yeah, never tells me awesome. anything that I want to know, right? The two yeah, never perfect. tells me things like casting animation or casting duration, casting time, casting range. Like, all of that is so damn important. Why yeah, you don't tell me Dota? Warcraft 3 Dota again. No, Warcraft 3 Dota. No, no, no. The Warcraft 3 Dota never told you that either. It's just like like a Dota thing being bad. It's just like. This fight's really important. Alright, well, we'll look at it in, in a bit here. Loda's gonna drop oats on top, not doing all sorts of damage. And here's a flaming lasso again. Where's the Bane? Is the Bane's gonna be dropping a load of Loda? BKB's out. Tombstone's gonna get dropped here. Hookshot, gonna go in, gonna get two. Gonna focus on Fog. Fog drops that rock. The rock's going to work right now. S4's dying to the tower. S4's gonna die to the tower. The fire on top. Admiral is so low. The Fatal Bond, the tower. The tower is getting a double kill out of everybody. Where the hell is that hero? Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden's not there. Loda dies to another time. That is a Diffusal Blade to secure the kill. Envy's gonna die as well. That's a full team wipe. Diving the tier two. Well, 
Well Gigi. then, big pearls. Big but, pearls. Uh, yeah. So what happened? What actually happened there was uh, Damon Toss made a huge, huge, huge error, uh -huh. and we tried to capitalize on it, and Dyer's we failed because. What was the, the error? I, I the error was know. that he was, they were up the hill next to you see that the hill above the tier two. Yeah, I'm looking. They were right in right the now. area, and we had vision of them. Had Amro hooked them right there and then, they were dead, all of them, because we would fight them. Outside of range, so the Luna Eclipse would just kill everybody, and they would be completely out of position. But so, because because um, Amro was blocked by us, he couldn't, he wasn't able to hook, and he never said anything on Skype, so we never knew that we were blocking him in the first place. Had uh, we not blocked him and he hooked them, they were all dead. We actually had a complete full miss, missed Eclipse, and all of them were almost dead after our team fight. So yeah, I think I think kill. two two or three beams of Eclipse, and that's pretty much it. And that team fight was rather close, and. Just on an update of the Golem Bash counter check is that I have not seen it not bash yet. So I'm not seeing it not cleave yet either. Yeah, yeah I have I mean, not I'm seen it not cleave yet. So not sure if Dignitas is on some like next level, you know, tactics. But this got this gotta get fixed. Yeah, there, there's so many bugs in Dota, and you we actually like we've lost against many so many bugs before. There was one game where we played against EG where they had Nax and Mech, and Nax uh, his rage didn't remove the. Mag buff. That's pretty much why we lost to that game. So, I, I mean, know. I don't There's wanna. Too many bugs in Dota right now. I, I don't wanna pin it uh, completely on like, oh yeah, the golems are bashing or cleaving. So that's why you know, uh, Dignitas is winning right now. But there, there is something to be said if uh, it's doing AOE damage and doing like I don't know, double or at least thirty percent more damage every single hit. That's that's a significant amount of a DPS buff. So. There's something to be said about that. There is a uh, pretty much decent farm on Loda, but seems like Loda's dying every single fight. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Sucks. Incoming. Oh, there is. The blade. There you go. He actually didn't get hard. I thought he went hard. Yeah, I, I I think getting hard is a little bit of overkill because he's not in danger of dying. Why not just get more uh, damage output? And that's exactly what he's what he's done. Defusible is such a good item on Unspectre. I'm not too sure, but... No, it, look, it, it, it instantly adds to your haunt illusions at least 20 extra damage. Never mind the attack speed, never mind that they're a little bit tankier due to the armor. Like, it just... Like, when you haunt, you're doing like 100 extra damage per second, or per attack to the entire enemy team. That's not bad. It's not like so, a bad item. Yeah, it's it's good. I'm not sure like how good though. I don't think people have played that hero enough. But sure. I, just, I, I just got a pipe, so... Really, okay guys, we got a pipe. Let's go fight. All right. Well, they're they're seeing over your tier two, and you guys are not rescuing that at least in time. Blink dagger back out here, and uh oh, and you had perhaps a little bit of trouble. Very very tanky with the Manta Vid Booster as well as, and this is all eyes on here on the Amber Bulldog. And are you guys gonna be? Yeah, you guys are doing an excellent job blocking that hook path. It's gonna get a little bit of sight, and Amro, Amro. He does have the blade mail finish on Shaken, not gonna deliver right now. Han's gonna come in and everybody's gonna disperse back out. Unfortunately, Ammo hooks him. Oh oh, and it looks like S4 is dead. MV is dead. That was just a bad fight. Yeah. Well. What happened there was uh, we we're like, okay guys, this is a really good fight for us in a, in a way at the tier two tower because at the tier two tower we can spread out and you can surround them from behind. Mm -hmm. If you look at that area. And we decided to fight them at an open area. And if you look at that fight, two of us went top, and the other two like stayed in the jungle, and we're like super spread out. And we thought it was actually a good idea to spread out like this. But I died in in one second. Spectre killed me in five hits. Cause like if you I was spread out. yeah that that's that's the thing that you point out in in the early draft. It's like damn if you do, damn if you don't. Because if you don't spread out, you're eating fatal bomb plus rock cleaving hits. If you do spread out, it's you're eating AI 65 damage pure desolate hits. Yeah, well, times you know, three. Times three. Cause, it's uh, cleaving every hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the chance of that? It's not 100%, 60%. I can tell 60 you that. Is it 50%? 60. 60%. But it's 100% the way that we're seeing it. Alright, well, Ice Frog, I hope you uh, are is watching this cast. If not, I hope somebody from Valve is watching the cast. And I hope this gets fixed. Also, a big shout out to uh, the people that are suggesting me replays. If you guys don't know, uh, suggest me replays at the Facebook group, Lumi Suggestion Box. And uh, this was suggested by Envy himself. So, no, 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 some other viewer suggested it. 
Uh, well, sure, if you don't want to take credit, it's uh, Dragon Fist. He also suggested it to me. Actually, a whole bunch of people suggested this to me. Ironically, not on Lumi's suggestion box, which is the place to suggest oh, me replays. It was, it was, it was. That's no, where didn't. I... Well, that's where I found it, so... Really? Okay. Well, shout out to whoever that suggested this. Sorry, I did not see it myself. There is a blade mail up, but I think at this point here, it's just a, a huge level of gold difference. Look at that, 15,000 EXP, 5,000 gold. 5,000 gold is not even that much. It's just, you know, it's like you lost three, four fights in a row and things are not uh, good. We can no longer kill them because two of them are BKBs. The Rubik's just, just going to stay back. We'll fight and Fogged is, holy shit. <laughs> like... He's tanky. He's, so, he's so tanky. He's that so eggs, like gives more than just the golem. Sure. I, I mean, it, it does give you, a f what, 200, 200 HP plus 10, uh, let's say 4, 400 HP. He's got a hood, he's got a mech. Yeah. Especially, especially the way he's playing is that he won stats and stuff, so he actually hurts. And Warlock actually hurts. Uh, he's one of the better supports, right? For the, the Better right in clicks. heroes with right clicks, yeah. yeah. 600 range as well. He just goes in and just right clicks you. He drops all his spells and he, then he and just What does he do, right? He just right clicks at that point. So, yeah. Dignitas clears out the mid tower as well, and it's gonna basically waltz away into the, vault into the base. Yeah, this this game, uh, I, I guess, it's a little bit downhill for No Tie at this point here, but it's gonna be at least one last hurrah up the up the hill. By the way, Crystal Maiden does have that 10 second BKB, forced to use a charge of it and still die earlier. But there is a very very potent freezing field. I have not seen this type of Crystal. I have not seen Crystal Maiden for a long time. I guess this is a very good. Uh, Belated Valentine's gift for, for all Crystal Maiden lovers. I know I'm one of them. And uh, so we decided to go for a smoke train from behind because we're like, okay, we're not waiting for the front. There's no way. Yeah. We have to do something random. I, I like that. I like that idea. But this is like last the last fight, right? Because if you don't win here, that's that's pretty much it. Envy smoke is the spell. Where's that tomb? Oh, there's gonna be tomb, but glyph or seems to double BKB gets popped right now. Ties of time focusing on Envy. Envy is gonna die immediately. Crystal Maiden walks around, walks around, walks around. Where's the freezing field? No, the golem. They're doing so. Look at the golem. Just melts a CM. Oh man, and that's pun fully intended here. S4 is basically gonna die as well. Loda didn't he didn't even get a chance to use that ultimate. The grip. Just took him away, and that's gonna be the DG call. Yep. It was it was a pretty good game, though. So. Yeah, it's pretty good. We game. don't feel like we played that bad, but it was just that one engagement. Extra turret turret. I actually want to go over. Also, I want I want to go over whether warlock um, golems actually splash before we complain too much. And sure, exactly sure, bullshit. fine. All right, but the first thing I want to see is a crystal maiden double kill. Thirty four. Thirty four minutes. So I gotta go back in and find this. Yeah, for those of you guys that, you know, just want to come here for the cast, thank you guys for watching, but uh, I guess we uh, want to focus a little bit more on the individual team fights and whatnot. Crystal Maiden ulting, ulting, ulting. What, 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 what? Yep, yep, she is pulling everybody. 33.45. Let's watch out one more time, because we can. But is that a team fight that you want to see? Or uh, there were other team fights that yeah, you want to see? That crystal man ulti. Let's see him out, man. Alright, hide yourself in the corner, wait for the rock. Woo! I didn't think way too sexy stole it, so but that was so much damage. <laughs> oh my god. That was like two three K for sure. Okay, I am watching this warlock in this particular fight. Yep, it's cleaving every hit. Yep, it's cleaving that hit and that one. Uh, I'm actually gonna and test that one. It. But, but I'm actually gonna test it. Let's and that test. one. Yeah, one more team fight first before I test it. All right, but which other team fight you're watching at? Uh, the most important one, when the Turkey Tower. Ah, okay, the one where you guys yeah. dove. Okay. Yeah, I think it's at forty-three thirty. Forty-three thirty. Forty-two thirty. Forty-three thirty. No, 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 no. Tier two tower top or tier two tower mid. Man, it's at it's at thirty eight thirty. Stop juking me, please. Yeah, everybody's all right. Thirty eight. I'll, I'll stop at thirty nine. I I'll like pause the game maybe at thirty nine and look what happens. Like look what we see. Pause the game at thirty nine and switch to dire fog, I guess. All right, thirty nine. Actually, we didn't even block Amro. Amro could have killed both of them right there. Where's the Amro? Amro is... Makes me sad, guys. 
I mean, he is in a sort of awkward position. You are- you're right in front of him! You're blocking him the whole time! I'm not blocking Yeah, him. you are! To the side! Look, that's no, he li look, watch that again. He literally had- he never had a clear path, and the only time he had a clear path, oh, okay. he handed he a two-man call. No, 39. He did. He- he- he kept walking Look, forward. I'm gonna just, watch it one more time. Okay, go on 39 and just pause and what happened. Okay. Alright, you got the Roshan. 39. Alright, I'm watching a 39. Okay, you guys are at the tier 1 tower right yeah, now. I'm blocking, I'm blocking, and then go to 3903. And if he didn't continue walking with me, and I just walked for myself and he just pulled position there, he would have got a perfect Yo, hook. man, that. Right. He, he would have hooked you. That hook has AoE. He wouldn't. No, no, no. It's, go, like, he stood at where he's supposed to stand at 39, but I kept going for it alone. Then he would have hooked me. Right? Look at that. E biggest throw. Well, regardless, like, um. Regardless, that golem this, is this still is, cleaving. This is, like, where we lost the game. If you, if you look at them, way too sexy and fog. We're above the hill. They were stuck together. Yep. And had they got hooked there, that was it. There's no way they can do anything. Because they can't beat us in a fight like that, where we just let them loot and tank everything for, um, up the hill. Because they would have to charge up the hill to fight us. I will be following the golem for the remainder of this 30 seconds, I guess. It's cleaving. I'm gonna test it. It's cleaving. It's, yep. Well, welcome to Cleaving Golem Dota. I hope you guys enjoyed this particular game. Dignitas uh, did manage to pick the best of three series, and if you guys weren't spoiled halfway through by Envy, yes, they won this game as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this particular one. And uh, it's Luminous and Envy signing out to you guys. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Let's go, Casper, ever.